Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Hopefully, if you're tuning in on YouTube, you see a little difference in the video quality today. Uh, we're changing some things around. We're trying to improve. Uh, I've moved and the studio is no longer, so I'm rebuilding a studio. So you're going to see a lot of improvements over the coming weeks and months. And this is one small step to make sure we get our content and our information uh, and our message out there in a more credible, relevant, interesting, positive way. So uh, hopefully that's the case. We'll continue to improve. Uh, guys, if you're new to the podcast and what we're doing here, uh, we've been going for eight years strong. This is a podcast dedicated to helping you become a better man, a better husband, father, business owner, community leader, just man in general. And all of us have had our struggles. I've had my fair share of struggles specifically over the past six to eight months, but we're all on the path. We're all on the journey. And it's my goal to give you information via this podcast with interviews from incredible, incredible men like David Goggins, Dan Crenshaw, Jocko Willing, Terry Crews, Tim Kennedy, Tim Tebow, and the list goes on and on so that you can improve in your life the way that you see fit and relevant. I've got a really important one for you today, and we're going to talk about male loneliness because this is becoming an epidemic. This is a real problem. On an anecdotal level, I talk with men every single day who are lonely, they're isolated, they're depressed, some are even suicidal, and they're just kind of down in the dumps. And on a more rigorous or at least uh, researched level, you know, the, the, the studies and the data suggest that men who are isolated and who are lonely are committing suicide, are have high, higher levels of, of depression, anxiety, and overall performance at work and at home and a level of satisfaction and fulfillment in their lives. So I don't need to sell you on why it's important that we be around other men. I don't think I need to do that. There might be some of you who, who may feel like you can do it alone. We're going to talk about that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you need other men in your corner. You really do. Um, you may not need it when things are going well, but when things are going poorly and things are going hard and, 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 and challenging for you, you've got to have guys in your corner. And that means building it out now, even if things are going well in your life. So today I thought I'd talk with you about three things that contribute to the isolation that men have, because if we can figure out what contributes to it, then maybe we can do something about it. And then number two, we can talk about five strategies that will help you overcome the isolation, the loneliness the, that, that you may be experiencing. So let's get right into it. Number one is this myth of the lone wolf. Like somewhere along the way, men started to buy into the idea that it's better or more alpha or more omega. I, I, it's like these Greek words that people use, that men use to describe themselves. Like I don't buy into that necessarily, but you hear that all the time. Like I don't, I don't need that. I don't need any of that. I'm an alpha. <laughs> I don't know why we've bought into this other than Hollywood has told you that the Marlboro man, Jason Bourne, uh, James Bond, all of these guys that we look at as these quintessential icons of masculinity. They didn't work well with others. They didn't need the help of other people. They always did it on their own and they always got the women, they got the money and they got the success. And I think that's a big part of, of the problem is that we look on the silver screen and we look at TV and we see the guys who are like, man, I want to be like that guy. I want to bed that many women like James Bond does, or I want to have that skill set like Jason Bourne does, or I want to be that cool like the Marlboro Man was. And we think, well, in order to do that, I've got to be alone. I've got to handle this on my own. I've got to man up, so to speak. And I don't take issue necessarily with that term unless the underlying root of it is that you need to go at it alone that you need to struggle, that you need to suffer, that you need to be miserable, that you need to be anxious, that you need to be depressed, that you need to be suicidal. You don't need to be those things. You need to be edified. You need to be uplifted. You need to be fulfilled. You need to be spoken into. You need to be called up. And for that to happen, you need to have other noble, righteous, honorable, capable men, successful men in their own rights in your corner advocating for you. That doesn't mean rubbing your balls, making you feel good about every decision that you make. And it also doesn't mean that they're going to beat you down to a pulp because you happen to make a mistake. No, these advocates are going to step up 
when they need to, when you need it. And these advocates are also going to put their arm around you and say, hey, bro, it's okay, I got you, when you need it. That's what we need. You can't do it alone, guys. You don't need to do it alone. You're not supposed to do it alone. I don't know why we think this is less manly. For thousands and thousands of years, men have been operating in tribes and packs and bands and brotherhoods and gangs. And it's worked. It makes us stronger. It makes us better. I'm coaching two of my son's baseball teams right now. They're better as a team. They work together. They don't want to let each other down. They call each other. They even give each other a hard time or tease each other or even give each other demeaning nicknames. Now, I know much of society and even women will be like, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. That's because they don't understand the way of men. Just because I give you a nickname that is somewhat demeaning doesn't mean I don't like you. It actually means I do like you. And that leads me into point number two is that we live in a world that has been overly feminized. That if a man confronts another man, a woman looks at it and is like, oh, we don't want that. We can't have that happen. Or society in general thinks that we're just pushing guys around and we're diminishing and dismissing each other. No, we're building camaraderie. We're calling each other up. We're poking at each other's vulnerabilities so that we can improve and get better. Even that word vulnerability has been bastardized. Be vulnerable, be vulnerable, be vulnerable. I don't want to be vulnerable. Okay, vulnerability represents weakness. It's something that can be exploited. It's something that can be taken advantage of. I want to be honest. I want to be open in my communication about what's really going on in my life, but I don't want to be seen as weak. And so women and even men who have bought into the ideas of women's connection, which is different than the way men communicate and connect, by the way, will take that word vulnerability. Just be vulnerable. Just be vulnerable. Why? Why should I just like spew all of my baggage onto you? Some will say that's not what vulnerability is. No, that's exactly what vulnerability is. Humility, honesty, on the other hand, is finding somebody that you can confide in, trust, somebody that you can work closely with, somebody who shares their struggles with you, their pain and their toil and their struggles, somebody you can do the same with, somebody who's successful and will call BS when you need it to be called. We're not going to feminize this. If we do, it's not going to work. And so, if we're, look, ladies, I love you. I love you to death. But don't you dare for a second tell me how I need to communicate and work with another man. With regards to my son's baseball teams, I know that there's ladies, there's moms in there that probably cringe at some of the things I say and do. But you're not a man, and you're not a boy, and you'll never understand it. That is not an indictment against you. It just means you'll never understand it because you're not a man, you're not a boy. And so let the men do what men do. Let's stop feminizing every aspect of our culture. Let's embrace masculinity. Let's celebrate and honor the honorable, capable, bold, righteous men who are doing good on, in their own right and then want to turn around and lend a help, helping hand to somebody in their corner or a son or a young man in their community and let the men do what men do. I have a lot of single women who will reach out to me because they're raising sons. And ladies, I love you. I commend you. My mom raised me and my sister primarily on her own. She did a wonderful job. She's a beautiful, lovely woman. But there was something missing. And again, that's not an indictment on her. It's just there was something missing. And you know who filled that for me? Coaches, men, coaches who were never easy on me, who never were light on me, who would yell at me at times, who would have just the, the total look of disgust uh, or or even just disappointment. And I could see it. And I didn't want to disappoint those men. And I wanted to perform. And I wanted to exceed. And I wanted to excel. Partly for my own sake. And my team. But also for those men. Men do it differently. We need to honor that. And the women need to step back. From that role a little bit. And society needs to step roll back. From that role. I saw an interesting video. It looked like a, a young family, a husband and a wife with a young child, maybe two, three years old, was at a table, and the boy, it was a boy, uh, fell off the chair. And the boy was in the middle between the mom and, and what I assume was the mom and the, and the dad. And he fell off the chair, and clearly he was fine. I mean, the boy wasn't injured. He just fell off and lost his balance, and he was fine. And the mom rushed over. <laughs> Let me hold it. And the dad said, well, stop. He put his hand up. He, you could see. He's like, there's no audio on the video, but he's like, stop. Like, 
let, let him get up. And he taps the chair for the boy to climb back up. And the boy starts climbing back up in the chair. And the mom goes over to help him. He's like, no. He pushes her away. He's like, let the boy do it. And that's the difference. Ladies, I'm not telling you you're wrong at all. You're right. Nurturing, loving, empathy, kindness, compassion, emotion, like beautiful. I love it. It's crucial. And also so is the role of men. And so guys, we need to find men in our corner and we need to stop over feminizing every aspect of our culture and allow us to be men. Third, a lot, I don't, I don't agree with this one, but I bring it up because it is something that gets brought up quite often. And that is that there tends to be this idea that there's a lack of candidates when it comes to finding other high caliber men who are in your corner. And I put it on here because a lot of guys say that this is not, it's not true. It 100% is not true. I haven't found that to be the case. I have neighbors within 50 yards of my house who are incredible men who I've gone to lunch with and spent time with and broken bread with and had conversations about what goes well and what doesn't go well. Within 50 yards of my house, there's like four of them. On this podcast, at events. Now, some might say, well, you know, it's easy for you to say, Ryan, because you have the podcast and you go to events. You can go to events. You can go to Chamber of Commerce. You can go to business luncheons. You can go to... Uh, the gym, you can go to jujitsu, you can go to wherever these guys are. Like, there's nothing prohibiting you from doing that. So I can't help but believe that the guys who say, oh, there's no candidates in my area just aren't really trying either as hard as they should be or as intelligently as they should be. And I'll get into that in a minute. But get over the idea that there's nobody in your area who thinks like you uh, or wants to be successful like you, you're not an island and you're not all that special. And I say that with all the love in my heart because I'm directing that at myself too. I'm not all that special. Sometimes I act as if I am, like I'm better than other people or I have something figured out that others don't. I don't. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not an island and I'm not isolated. There are people within, like I said, 50 yards of me who are more wealthy who are more connected, who are better family men, who are better fathers, who are better husbands, who are better people than I ever probably could be. So for us to say, oh, there's no good man, there's no guy I can connect with, that's just not true. There is. We just have to be deliberate and intentional about it. Okay, so we've talked about the issues as to why it's important that men find other men to band with. We've talked about why men don't band with other men. Let's talk about five strategies. If you are interested in figuring out how I can connect with this band of brothers and build this out, what can I do? Number one, you have to be an initiator, right? Nobody's going to come to you. I told you there's guys within 50 yards of me, 50, hundred yards of me. These guys aren't going to come to me and I don't expect them to. It's not their job. Would it be nice? Sure. Would I appreciate it? Absolutely. But that's not how the world works. And it's not their job, if I'm interested in connecting with these people, for them to come to me and create the pathway to connection. Guess whose job that is? That's my job. And so I have to look for ways and reasons to connect with. If you're new to an area, the perfect reason is I'm new to the area. And it takes balls to do that. But if you want a band of brothers, this is what you'll do. So you knock on all the doors. Hey, my name's Joe. Just moved here a couple of weeks ago. Wanted to introduce myself to the neighbors, see what's going on, how's everything going, and let the conversation go from there. If you see a neighbor that needs some help, maybe they're pulling weeds or they're mowing their lawn or weed whacking or whatever. I remember this when we moved to Maine. Our neighbor across the street just north of us, I was out uh, weed whacking this pretty sl steep slope of our yard, and I was weed whacking it with a weed whacker. And this guy comes over. His name's John. He was our neighbor. I didn't know him at the time. He comes over and he didn't come over and say, Hey, can I help? What can I do to help? No, he came over with his weed whacker, fired up, ready to go. And he just got after it. And I looked at him and he looked at me and he just nodded his head and just kept going. We didn't even talk. We talked when it was done, but that was it. He just nodded and I knew what that meant. Like, I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. And I nodded back, which means, hey, <laughs> I accept the help. I accept the support. And then we had a great conversation. We built a pretty good relationship over three to four years of being out there. That's a man who initiates. 
He doesn't ask for permission. He doesn't ask how he can help. He doesn't ask like what ways that he can connect. He just finds a way to do it. And then he does it. And that's how we need to be. How can you connect with the men in your neighborhood by knocking on their door? Maybe you're going to have a UFC fight night this weekend. I think there's fights this weekend. So you're going to have a UFC fight night this weekend. Ring the dang doorbell and invite those guys over. Call a handful of buddies, invite them over. Go to the grocery store and spend 100 bucks, maybe 150 now with inflation. Spend 150 bucks and, and you know, charcuterie board. Like, I, I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, and I can't make it as beautiful as I know a lot of women listening to this can, but you can get meat and cheese and crackers and chips and salsa. I wouldn't do vegetables, but you can if you want, if that's your thing. That's easy. Cost you 150 bucks. Cost you half an hour worth of making phone calls. And then the rest is you enjoy fights with friends. What a powerful way to do that. Jump online right now and say, hey, you know, I'm into hiking or I'm into jujitsu. I'm into shooting or I'm into painting. I'm into this. I'm into that. I, I, I watched a, a Bob Ross documentary uh, about a month or two ago. And him and his team would conduct art classes around the country in certain communities. Those things still exist. Now, Bob Ross is no longer with us to our detriment, but there's other people. If you're into painting, just type in painting in your hometown and you're going to find courses and classes and programs available. You like to cook? Do that. You like to sew? Do that. You like to hunt? Do that. You like to fish? Do that. You like to shoot firearms? Do that. Like there, There's things available is what I'm saying. There are things available. Go find them. And initiate. Number two, I just want to make sure I get this in the right order. You've got to do the right activities. Again, I already talked about this. We live in an overly feminized world. And so men aren't about to sit together and, you know, crochet uh, baby blankets for each other. Like, that's just not something that's going to happen. I know that's an extreme example, but I think you get the point. We're, we're not just going to sit there and talk. Are you interested in that? I'm not interested in that. Like, we're not going to sit there and, you know, hold hands and sing kumbaya to each other to try to make each other feel good about our poor decisions. Like, I'm not into that. I'm repulsed by that. You know what I do like, though? Fight nights. You know what I do like? Going shooting, training jujitsu, going to the gym. And it doesn't even have to be those so-called, like, manly activities. It could be painting, but as long as it's a directed and focused task... The whole issue, the whole goal is not to talk. That's the point I'm making. Like we're not getting together to talk. We're getting together to harness our collective energy and capability towards an outcome. And in the meantime, we're going to learn about each other. This is why men connect so well in war. It's really not about you as an individual or the guy standing next to you as an, as an individual. What is it about? It's about the mission. And you're banded over the mission and through that mission and through the challenge and hardship and adversity and headache and struggle and death and toil, you learn about each other and you serve each other. This is how men communicate. I'm not going to sit around talking to my neighbors about how many kids do you have and what are their hobbies and activities and interests and what are your biggest concerns with your kid? Like, this is just not what we do. Like, that's so draining to me because that's not how we show up. Now, some of you might, and if it works, great. I'm just saying generally, I'd rather go shooting with a buddy. And in the meantime, I can dabble those questions in. Hey, man, what's going on? Like, you seem down. Everything good? Yeah, you know, my, me and my wife, we're having a struggle right now. It's been hard, but yeah. And then you shoot a few more rounds. It's like, what are you and your wife struggling with? Oh, you know, we got into an argument last night because she thinks I buy too many guns and we're not able to pay off debt, whatever. I'm just making something up. But you see what I'm saying? Like you connect in the activity, in the mission. The exploration process happens as you're working collectively against a common enemy or towards a common pursuit. Uh, so it's got to be the right activities. Number three is that you, this is a quick little pro tip right here. Always save one spot. Always save one spot. And what I mean by that is that if you're going golfing this weekend, for example, you want to go golfing Saturday morning, eight, nine o'clock, you, you've scheduled a foursome, you need to invite two friends. So there's you and then two other friends. So that makes three. 
And then you always have to save one spot. And you save one spot for somebody that you've wanted to connect with, but you haven't been able to do that yet. Maybe it's somebody in your neighborhood. Uh, maybe it's somebody you admire for business. Maybe it's somebody you're connected with on social media who happens to be in your area, but you always save one spot. Golfing is a great example. Hunting for me is a great example. I might have a hunt come up. In fact, I do in the fall. I've got four or five hunts this year, but I have one coming up in the fall where we have six spots available. Four of those, I can connect with friends. So four, and then me, that's five. That sixth spot, that's reserved for somebody. Hunting, as an, uh, excuse me, I just said hunting, but Hawaii, we've got Hawaii coming up next month. I think we had six spots available. It's me and four close friends. One of those is, is my son, so closer than a friend. Uh, and then two other spots, one for two other guys that some friends and I have wanted to connect with, Eric Chesser uh, with um, Hush, and also Seth Studley with Anatomy of Marriage. Two guys we've kind of know, dancing around on the fringes a little bit. We know them, we connect with them. If we called, they'd answer, we'd have conversations, but we want to get to know better. So we always save those spots for somebody we want to invite into the circle. And that doesn't mean they're there forever. It just means, hey, I want to get to know you more. I want to connect more with you. I want to learn more about you. Maybe this develops into a deeper friendship. Maybe not, but here's a good way to do it. So always save one spot. Uh, number four, you should always, always be in the networking mood or mindset, I should say. Always in the networking mindset. I had a guy ask me because we're talking about this in our exclusive brotherhood, the Iron Council, which is closed right now. But if you want to learn more about it, go to orderman.com slash Iron Council. Regardless, he was asking about the percentage of time that he should spend networking. And the answer to that is 100% of the time. There's no, hey, 20% of your time should be spent networking or two hours per day should be spent networking. No, every day, all day, you should be looking at forming connections. Now that sounds exhausting to somebody who's never done it. And it also sounds exhausting if you have a motive. If your motive is, I need to be finding guys who can serve me and I can get the most out of and I can learn things from them and I can just extract value, that's going to be exhausting. If, on the other hand, you approach networking with the heart of service, I want to add value to these people's lives. I want to be well-connected so I can introduce people to each other. I want to help each other out. If you approach it that way, it's not exhausting at all. In fact, if anything, it's energizing because you're the one making the connections. You're the one serving. You're the one adding value. You're the one creating solutions to people's problems by formulating these connections. That's a cool thing. It's a really cool thing. It's a very fulfilling thing. And you may not ever get anything out of return, in return for, for the work that you do. That's not why you do it. Again, if you're doing it to get something out of it, it's exhausting. But if you're doing it purely because it's the right thing to do and because you want to be of service, it's not exhausting at all. So go out there, network, connect, find ways to meet people, find ways to add value, learn to tell jokes, learn to communicate, learn to lighten up, learn like whatever you need to learn to make connections, do that. And then the last one here, guys, is just being hyper consistent. Just being hyper consistent. I promise you that if you implement what I'm telling you and you do that day in and day out for the next month, for the next six months, for the next year, for the three years, for the 10 years, like you're going to be so well connected. I've been doing Order of Man now for a little over eight years. Is that right? Yeah, about eight and a half years. I am so well connected. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because this is what I've done. I've initiated conversations. I've initiated friendships. Uh, I've saved one spot. I've done the right activities. I'm always networking. And then I'm hyper, hyper consistent towards that work. Not towards an outcome, but towards the work. The outcome will take care of itself, but I need to do the work in order to produce that inevitable outcome. Guys, I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be isolated. Bad things happen. My mom used to say, idle hands are the devil's workshop. I think that's true. I would also say that idle minds are the devil's workshop as well. Reminds me of uh, Waterboy, Bobby Boucher. Everything is the devil. Guys, isolation is bad for you. Being a lone wolf is bad for you. It's bad for your mental health. It's bad for your emotional health. It's bad for your own personal development. It's not good. And I'm taking a hardline stance on that. Some people say, I'm better off alone. 
that's a bit, that's the, those are the words of a bitter person. You've been burned, you've been hurt. That happens when we interact personally with people. That's an isolated experience. It's an isolated event. I know sometimes people can be hard to trust. I know sometimes people let us down. But ultimately, I believe most people are good. And most people want to help. And most people want you to win. And most people want to be fulfilled. And most people want to do it with other people. So I hope that helps. I hope that serves you. If you're feeling lonely, isolated, depressed, anxious, even suicidal, don't think you're alone. You're not alone. There's people out there who want to serve and help and add value to your lives. And you should want to do that with for other people as well. So let me know. If you have any thoughts, comments, ideas, questions, concerns, critique, whatever, just let me know. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Check out the podcast. Or not the podcast. You are listening to the podcast. Check out the Iron Council. That's our exclusive brotherhood if you're feeling alone. It's a great way to connect with other like-minded men at orderman.com slash Iron Council. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action. Let's all become the men we are meant to be.